Is inflation data fake? Well, over the past few months, we've seen continuous disinflation, meaning the rate of price increases has slowed pretty close to 2 to 3%. There's been a lot of people suggesting that the official numbers are in some way faked or manipulated or just misleading, and they keep inflation artificially low. So for example, we have this tweet from a large Twitter account and a financial news site. So you know it states, why does everything feel so unaffordable? According to the pre-1983 CPI calculation method, inflation is nearly triple what current CPI data says. If you use pre-1983 CPI, inflation peaked at 18% in November 2022 and currently stands at a whopping 8%. Under this method, housing inflation more than doubled since 2020 alone. Even in August 2023, the CPI inflation method would have put inflation at 12%. Perhaps this is why there's such a large gap in headlines in reality. Are our inflation formulas off? And then another even larger Twitter account, Wall Street Silver, steps in and says, yes, owners are calling rent. It's completely useless. That is why they got rid of the previous method of calculating housing inflation and switched to owners are calling rent. That makes it easier to hide a huge portion of inflation. So what is going on here? What is, what's CPI and what is owners equivalent rent? And what, what does all this mean? Is it, is it keeping inflation artificially low or, or what does it mean? So to break it down, CPI is just a way of tracking inflation. You know, inflation is not an easy thing to keep track of. There's a lot of different, different metrics used and CPI is just one of them. The way CPI works is by tracking the prices of a fixed basket of goods. So people decide a number of goods that, try, that are supposedly represent what the average American is buying month to month, and it tracks how much prices go up and down through these goods and gives them a weighted average. And it makes sure to count things like the price of shelter more than the price of ice cream, since obviously the price of shelter is going to matter to people a lot more than the price of ice cream. But there are a few different ways to measure shelter prices, and this is what the tweets were addressing. Prior to 1983, CPI was measuring the direct cost of homeownership, focusing on things like the actual price of houses and mortgage interest payments. Well, after 1983, they switched over to something called owner's equivalent rent, which is based on how much homeowners would be paying if they were renting their homes from a hypothetical landlord. So what's the deal? Shouldn't we be focusing on the actual price of housing and not this hypothetical number that nobody's even paying? Well, there were a couple of issues with it that caused it to be changed in 1983. The first is that mortgage rates are heavily impacted by what's called the federal funds rate. This is the rate that the Federal Reserve sets for other banks to lend to each other. And that, along with other tools the Fed has, ends up affecting every other interest rate. So typically when inflation is high, the Fed will raise interest rates and try to slow the economy to bring inflation back under control, which ends up pushing up mortgage rates. Including mortgage rates in CPI meant that whenever the Fed raised rates, inflation would paradoxically go up because mortgage payments increased. And in fact, this is what we're seeing in the graph. Housing prices doubled because the high rate of interest pushed up mortgage payments. So ironically, these people are falling into the trap that the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, who, who uses CPI to track this stuff, try to avoid when they change the methodology. You don't want a direct effect of raising the interest rate to show up in your measure of inflation because raising interest rates is how you fight inflation. Now, there are actually a few other reasons why they change the methodology, which I'll mention briefly. Ordinarily, we just want to measure the purchase price of something and not the interest paid on it, right? Well, prior to the switch to owners equivalent rent, both purchase price and interest payments were being considered when tracking inflation. Another reason is that the CPI is supposed to measure consumption, when in many ways, owning a home acts less like consumption and more like an investment. That's how many American families build wealth. So it's better to create a metric like owners equivalent rent that more closely approximates what the price of housing would be if, if it were actually consumed rather than it serving like an investment vehicle. And now I want to end by addressing the second tweet I brought up that said that OER is useless and hides how high inflation really is. Now there are issues with owners equivalent rent. I actually made a video where I talked at length about it. But, that, uh, but what's ironic is that owners equivalent rent is actually often what keeps inflation artificially high rather than artificially low. That's because owner's equivalent rent actually lags behind other market prices and the general macroeconomic condition. That's why we have things like the new tenant repeat rent index, which actually looks at um, only the subset of, of units that have new tenants in them that have signed leases, which gives a much better indicator of what the housing market looks like right now. And if you actually look at that, it shows way more disinflation than what CPI is currently showing. You can also look at the harmonized inflation data, which doesn't include housing prices, and that's already back down to the Fed's 2% target rate. So if you want to read more about why the methodology would change, I'll leave a link to a blog post in the description. Um, that'll be a fun read for you. And if you've seen this chart from Shadow Stats at all, which also says that inflation is much higher than it really is, um, I'll link down below to a video and a blog post from the economist Christopher Clark. He does a great job debunking it. But if you disagree with any of this stuff, you can tell me in the comments. 
I do ask if that if you enjoyed the video, you just you leave a like and you subscribe to watch more stuff like this. Yeah, thank you all for watching.